After you hear this, you're going to want to change the passcode on your iPhone and iPad. I'm Kurt the Cyber Guy with, well, my first podcast episode. The feds can now unlock any iPhone. That is a news today. A Forbes reporter found out just by looking at a uh, Israeli-based forensics company that it had reportedly been hired by the FBI way back at that San Bernardino terror event to pry open an I- iPhone that Apple said it could not do. Well, Apple said it was impossible. The government's smartest minds could not get into it. And eventually this private forensics contractor using brute force was able to get into that iPhone. And apparently now they're marketing to others and have confirmed it, that they can access any locked iPhone for any iOS generation way back to even right now. And I would imagine... Uh, if you're listening to this, we're right at about 11.2 something. Their next upgrade is going to be, or update's going to be 11.3 in the iOS. And they're probably going to be making some tweaks to it to make it less easy for this to happen to your iPhone or your iPad. It raises up a whole bunch of questions, which is, you know, does it make us safer to be able to get into an iPhone or an iPad of a locked, uh, locked phone? Um, I, for one, am really about no big brother and not having a lot of hands on on my technology and me having a bit more control over what I choose to share. And even though it's not really in my control anymore, I want to at least believe that it is. And when I lock my phone, I want to feel like it's actually locked. Um, There's some things, though, you can do in terms of changing the passcode that you're using that makes it a lot stronger. Um, One of the things, I mean, just right off the bat, how to make your iPhone or iPad a lot more secure from being unlocked is to, number one, avoid that four-digit simple passcode that was the original option when we first got into iPhones. I still use it. And if if you have any of the four passcodes, these are, by the way, kind of funny. And at some point I had one of these. These are the four most dangerous, often broken into passcodes that people choose. Ready? Uh, the first one is triple zeros. Have you ever done that one? Then uh, 2580, and that's that line straight down the middle of the phone. The third one is 1111. And finally, have you guessed it? Yep, 1234 is the fourth one. Don't use any of those. You want to avoid those. And instead, make the passcode a lot longer instead of four digits. You can do the six uh, digits, and then you could even go stronger, make it a bit more complex by using numbers and letters. And it makes it Not very easy for uh, these contractors like Celebrite and Israel or anybody else, including a hacker, to unlock your phone. People are asking me, like, how are they doing this? How how have they actually gotten in to do that? Well, so far, Celebrite's not talking. They're not telling us how they're doing it, but speculation online. And what makes a lot of sense is pointing to a possible software manipulation that they have concocted that resets the number of attempts made to unlock the device. So as you recall, you could you could have that setting where, and it was your option, where you could choose that after 10 failed attempts, it'll just wipe out your, your data and zero out your phone, turning it into a brick. I turned that on on mine. I like it. I like the fact that I think uh, no matter how late the night is, no matter how fumbling uh, I am moving around, uh, by the tenth time, I probably should have my phone wiped out if I can't unlock it myself. Um, they also have, over time, Apple's gotten a lot smarter, just trying to protect us a bit more. And the the more you attempt um, to to unlock an Apple device and you don't have the right passcode, it starts slowing you down. So at some point, it says, "Well, you got to wait a while." Well, now you got to wait an hour. Well, now you got to wait till tomorrow. So apparently, Celebrite has figured out how to completely bypass that and apparently they're sort of like hot wiring uh the ios so that it it resets the the counter so that the counter doesn't know that an attempt was even made that's the leading theory behind it and the fact is uh this division called advanced unlocking and extraction services um right now is only offering this service to law enforcement agencies but it brings up some questions which is uh you know first question on my mind is well, what sort of regulation keeps them from selling it to just somebody that's got a lot of money and is willing to pay? 
And the answer to that one is really nothing. It's sort of out of our control. This this Israeli company, they're brilliant. They're sharp minds. Israel, as you know, is one of uh, the leaders in, in developing extraordinary security technologies. Uh, if you remember, you know, the, the navigation tool Waze has come out of Israel, including Wix, that uh, make your own website uh, company. In fact, there's over 100... Um, 100 publicly traded, if not almost publicly traded companies that are in the tech sector that have uh, a market cap of, of a half billion or greater that uh, originated in Israel. So these people know what they're doing. It's uh, very smart, but there's nobody really regulating it, not outside of their country, certainly not here in the U.S. We have no control over what they choose to do. And when our own government can't figure out how to get their hands wrapped around encryption and decryption especially, then how do we even trust that our phone will remain locked and that they can uh, keep it in, in a way that we can trust that? Because fact of the matter is, um, I don't know, if if this private contractor loses control of the backdoor tool that they've created, and I don't know that it's software, but it's probably a technique using software that allows them to break into the Apple device, well, what's to stop them from offering that same tool or it escaping from one of their employees and it gets to the hands of the bad guys? Uh, opportunistic, opportunistic hackers, they're looking to hijack your life for ransom for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks. They'd love this kind of tool. They would love it. And then what if the tool becomes more widely available globally and then is used against you in court or by your boss because, you know, a, a subpoena when it's possible a judge can decide, yeah, I want everything in your phone to be unlocked, even though you've encrypted it and you, you, you thought it was all going to be locked up. I'm going to have that pride open and uh, the, the person divorcing you can have complete access and, and the court will see everything. Well, I'd rather have that in my own, my own pocket and my own hands rather than the court or anybody else being able to do this. Uh, a lot of people argue, though, in terms of how safe it is to have this kind of service and tool out there, you know, law enforcement professionals have been looking for a tool like this for a long time. And it's hard to argue when somebody presents to you that if if not for a locked phone, they could be putting away child molesters, drug dealers, killers. And that's their argument, that they have hundreds of people that they have possession of the phone, and that would be the... The one piece of evidence is sitting inside that phone that would lead them to a conviction of those type of, of criminals. Well, wouldn't it make sense to give them access to a criminal's device so that they could pull that data out? Well, a lot of people are split on that issue, but it, it, it's worth having a, a conversation about it. It's worth thinking about it. You know where Apple stands on this, and they were really smart to just say, you know what, we're not going to be involved. We're not going to create a backdoor tool. Instead, we're going to create something that has integrity, that's authentic, that, that is yours. If you lock it, it's your data. It doesn't belong to us. It may be stored with us. And Apple in the past has been very good about complying with uh, subpoenas and working with law enforcement um, when it comes down to protecting people and, and letting the bad guys be found. Uh, but they, they've never really allowed anyone access into a device because simply it's not within their own control, they say. So um, what they will give access to is what you have stored on iCloud, which brings up another whole other conversation, which is whatever you've got on iCloud, whatever you've got uh, stored on a Google Drive, anywhere in the cloud, that is fodder and open to, I would just make complete assumption that that's not yours and it's not private, that that it has other eyes on it at any time. Um, anyway, I think what we're about to start seeing is a, is a cat and mouse game uh, as Apple starts to seal off this opening that's been made by Celebrite and this Israeli forensics company. And its next iOS software is probably going to catch up with that. If not, it'll be the version after that. And then you know what'll happen. Uh, Celebrite will, will get smart and figure out a way around that one also. Um, at any rate, what I would tell you now is um, it makes complete sense to change that passcode you've got now. If you've got it down to a four-digit passcode, bring it up to at least six and use alphanumeric. So combine some 
some letters and numbers together. Uh, and the more complex, uh, the better, where it's not easy for them to guess. Because let's say that even Celebrate, Celebrate got a hold of your phone and they applied this tool to it. They could get into it. If you had something that was six uh, digits long alphanumerically, it's going to take that software a long, long time to guess at what that combination is of yours. So get smart, seal it up, change your password. And uh, if you'd like to share this podcast with some of your friends, your family, if you're feeling the love, share this with your your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your your best friend. And even if you don't like the people, send it to them anyway. Uh, and then I remember the sign off when I started tech reporting, God, ages ago. At one point, I worked at the TV show Extra, and it was so much fun. And and for hours, they had me utter the same line again and again and again into the microphone until we got it. And now it just sounds like total cheese. What do you think? It's ready? Point, click, and fly. It's just that easy with the cyber guy. Oh, my God. I can't believe we even said that how many times <laughs> on the air. Uh, if you've got questions, you want to leave a comment. I'm at CyberGuy on Twitter, CyberGuy Official on Facebook, and Kurt the CyberGuy on Instagram. I mean Instagram, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Cyber guy.